has given him. Step on some toes. <laughs> uh, it's not my intention. It's God's intention. See, I want to preach something totally different. I want to preach what's in hell do you want? But God said that ain't what his people need to hear tonight. But I thought that was a good sermon. But being obedient, you have to do what God leads you to do. So he gave me. Antioch, will you please stand? Before I, you know I forget, and I don't want to hurt no feelings. Amen. Amen. I want to thank you for coming out. Get a choir hand. I almost wanted to sing, but I didn't want to run nobody out. So I stayed in my proper place. Amen. Hebrews. Chapter 12. Verse 14 and 15. This is a new year. Yes, sir. Reverend Brewer last night asked, said we need to ask God to make us over. My Lord. And I'm going to do a little something different, Reverend Brewer. Oh, here's that. And we find these words recorded. I'll wait till the page is stopped. 
I'm not going to ask Baptist people to tell me amen when you get there because I don't want nobody lying to church tonight. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14 and 15. We find these words recorded. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Look and diligently, at least any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. All right. All right. And for a subject, tell your neighbor, the preacher going to preach about forgiveness. All right, all right. Preach, man. Preach, man. Yeah. I want to start off by saying, Reverend Brewer, I forgive you. You set me up last night, and I forgive you. Here we see this scripture stressing the importance of pardoning those who have offended us. Did you all hear me? These scriptures stress the importance of pardoning, forgiving those people who make you mad, And who make you angry. Forgiveness is important in a Christian's life. Many of us feel natural in pulling away from the people that have hurt us. When a co-worker says something that offends us, we don't have nothing else for them. Unforgiveness. When one of our classmates embarrasses us in front of the class, we don't speak to them anymore. Yeah, 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 yeah. Unforgiveness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. When one of our best friends tells a secret yeah, yeah, yeah. that we told them, yeah, yeah, yeah. we can't see talking to them again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unforgiveness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When that person that we loan money to don't pay us back, yeah, yeah, yeah. we want to knock their block off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's unforgiveness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our own family members yeah. Stole from us. Yeah. yeah. And all they had to do was ask for it. Yeah. Yeah. But they can't come back to our house. Yeah. That's unforgiveness. All right. All right. Somebody stole your man or your woman yeah. and it's on. Yeah. You gonna get them no matter how long it takes. Yeah. That's unforgiveness. Forgiveness. Oh, we need to have that word in our vocabulary. Since forgiveness is God's design, it ought to be our design and our concern. With renewed strength and patience, we may follow peace with all men and holiness. If we grow impatient under the affliction of unforgiveness, then how can we walk peacefully toward men? and towards God as we should. It is our duty. It is what we must do when somebody offends us. We must have peace with all men and women. No matter whom or no matter what they have done to us. I know this is a hard lesson to receive. But it is not too hard to attain. Because Christ has called us to do this. The portion where this scripture comes from, these texts come from, is talking about laying aside every weight and every sin which is holding us back and running with patience the race that is set before us. When we lay aside all weight and sin, then we should look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who endured the Christ, the cross. He despised the shame and is set down at the right hand at the throne of God. And if we are looking unto Jesus, then we will have to do what is right. Unforgiveness has a lot of consequences that we 
need to look at. It's hard on us to have unforgiveness. Unforgiveness harms our family interaction. Have you ever and your family ever tried to have a growing and loving relationship with somebody in your family that is mad with people in the family? You just can't do it. Because that person is fixated on the unhealthy feeling about somebody that they don't want to have anything to do with. If you are that person in your family, I want you to know that that bitterness that consumes you make you unlikable. Make people hate to be around you. People you like, but they don't like you. And you be saying, what I do? Why they don't like me? Forgiveness. Forgive whoever it is that you don't care for. Forgive those who you believe that are the cause of your trouble in your family. How can you show love when you have bitterness in your heart? A bitter root is a root that bears bitter fruit. This makes it impossible for the seed of bitterness to run through your family. Because you just can't forgive somebody for what they did or said that hurt your feelings. And many of you are corrupting others in your family because of what somebody did to you. And you won't let it go. You're so stubborn in your bitterness. I don't know if y'all see somebody bitter, but I hate bitter people. What you need to do is remember this. That God then hold all your wrongdoing against you. The lies that you told, He forgave you. The rumors that you spread, He forgave you. The things that you did to make other people mad, He forgave you. Your secret life, oh, watch out now. Your secret life that you were living, He forgave you. Your attitude towards others, He forgave you. What if God's grace wasn't given to you? You would be among the lost, heading straight to hell. But God has been good to you and He forgave you of your sins. He has extended His mercy so that we don't get what we deserve. Watch. God said, in his word, that for the pure uh -oh, in heart, they should see God. You can't get into heaven if you can't forgive those who have wronged you. What you're actually doing is just like Esau. Esau was so hungry, he sold his birthright for a taste of food. you selling your opportunity at everlasting life because of what somebody did. Or what somebody said about you? Yeah, yeah. Today, some of you all need to forgive yeah, yeah. in a bad way. Yeah. It also blocks your blessing, Reverend. Uh, yeah, yeah. You're thinking I'm not forgiving, and some of y'all saying that right now. I ain't forgiving nobody. I don't care what he said. A higher sound. I'm not gonna forgive them until I hear them words. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm not going to forgive them. When you act like this. You blocking your blessing. When you have the nerve to go down in prayer. When you have the nerve to say, God, I know you're with me. When you have the nerve to say, I got a father who can. You blocking your blessing. When you ask things of God because your unforgiveness is a sin. And I confess sin creates static in our relationship with God. Then you say, can you hear me now? You got static. Matthew 5, 23 and 24 says that if you bring, some of y'all going to get mad in front of me when I say this, if you bring your gift to the altar, 
and you remember that your brother has an oath against you. You leave your gift and go reconcile to your brother. Then you come back to the altar. We can't carry around forgiveness to God's altar and expect to be blessed when we pray because we have caused our direct line to God to be interfered with. Clear up that line to God so that He can hear you. Forgive the hurt that somebody caused you. Forgive the pain that you had. Some of y'all little feelings been hurt so bad. Pain over 30 years ago, you don't know why you're still hurting, but you just know they did something to you. You got to forgive. You know when one of us have a problem with somebody, we can't keep it to ourselves. Everybody knows that you can't stand your brother, your sister. They know when you can't stand your cousin. They know when you can't stand your best friend no more. Whoever. And your so-called enemy will walk back. And you won't even speak. And everybody else say, hey, what's going on? And you turn your head. And everybody notice that you ain't forgave them for whatever it is. And you'll testify to something that God has done for you. And won't nobody hear a word you say. Your personal testimony will be damaged because the highlights of your testimony is salvation. Which centers around the truth that the Lord has forgiven all your sins. How can you stress the importance of this if your listeners can't even hear them? What you talking about? Because the unforgiveness in your life. How can you tell somebody about the goodness of God and how He forgave you if you can't forgive the people around you? Come on, help me now. Do you believe that anybody would believe that you can tell them anything when yet and still you won't forgive? When you don't forgive your hurt, when you don't forgive, your own spiritual growth will suffer. When you don't forgive, you put yourself in a dangerous and weak position because God will not bless sinful action. God is all you need. But why keep yourself from God by your unforgiveness? Why keep God from blessing you because you won't forgive Reverend Morgan? Why keep God from blessing you because you hate the preacher and the preacher never said anything to you? Why keep God from blessing you when you don't like the hearses and they ain't did nothing but hold their hand out and point to a seat? Why keep God from blessing you because you don't know who you really are? You, you go to Sunday school. You go to Bible study. You walk outside the church. I can't stand them. You might as well stay at home. Because you're hurting your blessing. Some of us just can't see the goodness of God. Can't see the blessings. This atheist teacher was messing with one of her Christian students. She said, I'll give you $100 if you can show me where God is at. Well, the Christian student looked at the teacher who said that, and he said, I'll give you $100. You can you show me where God's not? <laughs> The student said, Teacher, where can I go from the presence of the Lord? If I took wings and flew to the uttermost part of the world, behold, God is there. If I lived like I was 
in the very gates of hell. Behold, God is there. Teacher, I, I come to tell you that nature is God's workshop. The sky is His resume. The universe is His calling card. If you want to know who He is, just look at what He does. If you want to know His power, just look at His creation. If you want to know His strength, take a trip to His home address. One billion starry star avenue. I come to tell you, He's untainted by the atmosphere of sin. Teacher, He's unfiled by the timeline of history. Teacher, He's unhindered by the weariness of the battle. Teacher, what control you does not control Him. Teacher, what makes you tired don't make Him tired. Teacher, what troubles you don't trouble Him. Teacher, He is, He is, He is, He is God and God all by Himself. Teacher, He's the first and the last. Teacher, He's the beginning and the end. Teacher, He's the keeper of creation. Teacher, He's the creator of all things. Teacher, He's the architect of the universe. Teacher, He always will be unchanged. Teacher, He always going to be undefeated. Teacher, He always going to be right in all that He do. Teacher, His word is eternal. Teacher, His word is unchangeable. Teacher, He is the leader of all leaders. Teacher, He is Adam's redeemer. Teacher, He is Gideon's fleet. Teacher, He is Samson's power. Teacher, He is Solomon's wisdom. Teacher, He is Jeremiah's bomb and Gideon. Teacher, He is Ezekiel's wheel in the middle of a wheel. Teacher, He is Matthew King. Teacher, He is Luke Great Physician. Teacher, He's John Word made flesh. Teacher, He's Acts the coming of the Holy Ghost. Teacher, He's our all in all. Teacher, His goal is a relationship with you. Teacher. He promised never to leave me, nor forsake me. Teacher, He promised to never overlook me. Teacher, He promised never to cancel my appointment in His appointment book. When I fall, teacher, He lifts me up. I fell down and He forgave me, teacher. When I'm weak, teacher, He makes me strong. When I'm lost, teacher, He's the way. When I'm afraid, teacher, He's my courage. When I stomp a teacher, He said it's me. Teacher, when I hurt, He heals me. When I'm blind, teacher, He leads me. When I face the trials, Teacher, he's with me. When I face problems, teacher, he comforts me. Teacher, when I face death, he carries me home. He was the one with the steps in the sand. Do you want to know why I feel so secure? Because God is in control. Every day is a blessing because God is with me. Every hour is a blessing. Every second is a blessing. He forgave me. You know how I know he forgave me. One day, one day, his son came down through 42 generations. He forgave the teacher. He forgave the teacher. One day, his son walked up Calvary Hill. One day, they nailed him to the cross. One day, they pierced him in the side. One day, he laid his head in the locker on the shoulder and say it's finished. But that's not the rest. That's not the end of the story. That's not the end of the story. I want to tell you, teacher, teacher, they took him down, laid him in a borrowed tomb. But the tomb was just borrowed because he gave it back on that third day. He said on the third day, I will reveal this temple on the third day. Early, early, early Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. He got up with all power, saving power, forgiving power, loving power, leading power, carrying power, carrying power. He got up. I know he forgave me. 
I know he forgave me. I can call him the lily of the valley. I can call him the rose of Sharon. I can call him my shepherd. I can call him my savior. I can call him my prince of my prince of peace. I can call him king of kings. I can call him my deliverer. But most of all, I can call him Jesus. 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 